Hello, my darlings. Madam Raven here with a wonderful tale by the talented Bo Pandy. This one is sure to give you the creeps, especially your arachnophobes. It's entitled, Never Kill a Spider. If you are like most people, you have no room in your house for spiders. Even those who appreciate the natural pest control aspect of their webs still want them outside. Way outside. Here's a little science factoid to make your skin crawl. They are never more than six feet away from you at any given time. Sometimes closer. Go ahead. Turn off the lights and go to sleep tonight. They'll probably stay off your pillow while you lie there. Helpless completely exposed. I've never been much for housework. That indifference in my cleaning attitude brought about an uneasy truce with these creepy crawlers. I suppose if they are never more than six feet away, lazy people have an even closer range of arachnid to human. In the back of my mind, I always realized they were lurking around my home, but I was a great pretender. I convinced myself they weren't above me crawling on my ceiling when the lights were out. They weren't lowering themselves down by a string of woven silk to tangle a few inches or centimeters for the rest of the world from your snoring mouth. Either that or I pretended we had an unspoken agreement to live and let live. All that naivety went away when a mysterious sore on my arm started to itch. I ignored it for a day or two. Then it got worse, and my whole arm started to ache. I went to the doctor. They knew right away what it was. The truth is, I knew it was a spider bite too, but denial is a powerful thing. I kept hoping that it would just take care of itself. It wasn't going to. <laughs> Reality isn't like that. It was going to get much worse in the end. They gave me a triple dose of powerful antibiotic, reserved just to fight the flesh-eating bacteria. I lost some muscle tissue as they elected to cut away a little healthy skin to starve it. The theory is that just like a forest fire, necrotizing facilities needs fuel to stay alive. In a forest fires, they go ahead and cut down the exterior ring of healthy trees to prevent the spread of the fire. In my case, removing the nearby unaffected tissue helped to isolate the aggressive bacteria of course, forest fires can still jump these fire breaks and contaminate the trees beyond the safety zone, and so can flesh-eating bacteria. For a few days, it was touch and go. A couple of my major organs were threatening to fail, and my fever spiked wildly before it started to reverse. Even after the flesh-eating bacteria was under control, I was an elevated risk for secondary infection by other opportunistic infections from my gaping wound. The external skin kept out all sorts of nasty germs. With an open hole, any present bacteria could just bypass my dermal defense and attack my organs. I ended up needing a couple of you can believe that my prior indifference about house cleaning and my attitude about spiders changed drastically after I went home. I declared war. It was ugly. I made it my mission in life to destroy every unauthorized creature in my home. I cleaned. I sprayed. I called exterminators. I did everything I could short of burning down the house to eradicate those little creeps. 
I didn't realize at the time, but but that's when it was about to go really bad. From a health standpoint, all the toxic chemicals used to make my home spider-free were every bit as dangerous as they are. As they are. The poisons are very hazardous. Cancer-causing carcinogenics, but I desperately tried to associate the lingering pesticide smell. But I desperately tried to associate the lingering pesticide smell with a safer house. It was a false sense of comfort, but it did help me sleep a few nights. For all the effort, I did have a spider-free house for a while. But, like anything else, they will develop an immunity to the poison. They don't like being outside in the fluctuating temperatures either. They want to be inside with you and me. <laughs> Nifty. In only a few weeks, I spotted the first known arachnid settler in my house. I was appalled. I was furious. I didn't know what to do. The tiny creature on my bathroom counter wasn't that different from the one that had nearly killed me a month earlier. How did it get in? How did it survive the toxic cloud of chemicals? I was exposing myself daily just to deal with my newfound phobia. I wanted to cock up every inch of my home, but my exterminator said that the little creep could have just as easily came in inside a package or grocery bag. They can slip in through microscopic cracks in the ductwork. He delivered me a death blow. It was clinically impossible to guarantee a spider-free residence. Even with this diligent effort, I'm done for. Perhaps, understandably, I developed a crippling fear of the eight-legged horrors. In just days, I witnessed several more of them in various places in the house. I wanted every last one of them dead, but for each one that I squished, it seemed that a half dozen more came to take its place. I developed the shakes. I couldn't turn off my light so I couldn't sleep. That breeds a sleep deprivation, narcotic like psychosis. I felt them crawling all over me, their fuzzy legs scurrying around my skin like torturous butterfly kisses. If I did accidentally nod off, I was petrified that one had crawled up my nostril or into my drooling maw. It was absolute, unrelenting hell. That night I crashed hard. The lack of restful sleep and dopamine drove me into the deepest sleep I've ever experienced. While I fully admit that I did really fall asleep, and I had been hallucinating earlier, I swear what I'm about to tell you is 100% true. The multiplying spider population in my home contacted me within the dream. Yes, I know how that sounds, but we don't really know what their species is capable of. Who's to say they can't? I was told under no uncertain terms that if I killed any more of them, I would have the wrath of an arachnid army upon me. They also apologized for the bite on my arm that had started the whole ugly crusade against them. Apparently, the individual that bit me violated their symbiotic code of conduct. She had been dealt with. I woke up in a cold sweat and shivered about how incredibly vivid it all felt. It was the most terrifying, lifelike dream I've ever had. Of course, I chalked it up to being the whimsy of extreme sleep deprivation. But then something quite chilling happened, as if to reinforce the seriousness of the message. The spider from the dream was dangling directly above my head. Mock me if you must, but it really happened, and the message was received, loud and clear. 
I shall kill no more spiders in my home, and I implore you to do the same. They have their ways of getting revenge. Creepy, crawly ways. So quoth this raven. Darlings, please like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter to know when my videos come out because some reason I don't have a bell. If you leave a comment, I will reply. I enjoy your company, my darling. Please come back.